Influenza A virus membranes contain three proteins, neuraminidase, the proton channel M2, and hemagglutinin. Hemagglutinin is an antigenic integral membrane glycoprotein found on the surfaces of influenza viruses. It stimulates the production of an antibody and is a class of protein that has carbohydrate groups attached to a polypeptide chain. Influenza A can have some serious complications, including pneumonia, dehydration, febrile seizures, inflammation of the central nervous system, and cardiac complications. Some respiratory symptoms include cough, shortness of breath, wheezing, nasal congestion, and sore throat. There are three types of influenza with type A having the most moderate to severe symptoms. This type is subdivided based on antigenic differences and affects both humans and animals. The name hemagglutinin comes from the protein's ability to cause red blood cells to clump together or agglutinate in vitro. An influenza blood test can be performed by drawing blood and checking for clumping of erythrocytes. If influenza is present, the cells will clump together. If there is no virus or if antibody is present, clumping of cells will not occur. This test is not standard procedure for diagnosing influenza, but it is helpful to do when a patient has flu-like symptoms when there's no flu outbreak in the area. Hemagglutinin has two primary functions, one of which is to bind influenza to its receptor, sialic acid. This occurs in the cells found in the upper respiratory tract and within erythrocytes. Hemagglutinin's other function is to cause fusion of membranes for viral genome entry. Once the virus is engulfed, a new membrane-bound compartment is formed to hold a virus called the endosome. Hemagglutinin binds the viral membrane to this endosome in order to release the viral genome into the cell. The structure of hemagglutinin is very important for the replication of influenza within mammals. The protein contains three spherical heads that hold multiple sialic acid binding sites. The protein is also homotrimeric, meaning that it contains three identical monomers. These monomers form a central alpha helix coil. Hemagglutinin has high specificity of binding to units of sialic acid. This binding allows the virus to recognize its target cells. Taking a closer look at the binding site, it can be seen that hydrogen bonding occurs between the glycine and threonine residues of the globular head. Once many sialic acid compounds have bound to these residues, the virus is engulfed and enclosed within the endosome. The three monomers can be subdivided into two parts, HA1 and HA2. HA1 is the receptor binding site and HA2 forms the stalk of the virus. The receptor binding site is a very conserved feature of an otherwise antigenically variable surface. The end terminus of HA2 contains the fusion peptide, which is hidden within the three-fold axis of the trimer. The fusion peptide can't interact with hydrophobic targets until exposed with low pH. Acidity, as within the endosome, allows the fusion peptide to emerge and interact with the target membrane. Low pH causes the trimer of hairpin conformations to fold inside out to reveal the monomers and fusion peptide. The newly adopted conformation is irreversible due to the high energetic cost of going back to a neutral pH conformation. After the conformational change, the viral genome is able to fuse the endosomal membrane to the viral membrane to allow the influenza virus to escape the endosome and enter the cytoplasm of the host cell. After this has occurred, the virus is able to freely replicate and continue the process of duplicating its genome to infect new cells. The two other proteins of the influenza virus, the ion channel and neuraminidase, are current targets of anti-influenza drugs. M2 is blocked by the drugs amantadine and romantadine, while NA is blocked by the drugs zanamivir and oseltamivir. All four drugs are resistant, but there is a rising need for new drugs that may be able to resist mutant viruses. Drugs that target hemagglutinin are in development and may be more effective than those previously stated, 
since the protein is so integral for influence of function. However, the development of more complex compounds has been limited by the lack of crystal structures and efficacy of compounds to the various subtypes of hemagglutinin found in viruses. Now let's take a look at how the influenza virus hemagglutinin interacts when complex with a neutralizing antibody. There are several residues that an antibody can target to have high specificity of binding and inhibit hemagglutinin functionality. These residues include glutamic acid, lysine, tyrosine, asparagine, aspartic acid, proline, and serine. The presence of antibody prevents membrane fusion, but the antibody efficacy is still fairly low. A known inhibitor of membrane fusion infectivity, terbutylhydroquinone, binds the hemagglutinin within the large hydrophobic space between HA monomers. With further research, the efficacy of such inhibitors may be improved so that it becomes easier to prevent the influenza virus from spreading.